Hey students, it's Miss Van Gerwen. Here we are, our second assignment for this week, writing assignment. We are going to have some fun with this writing. It is on animal fantasy. We're going to talk about that in a second here. And this is my dog, Pablo. He wants to be in it since we're talking about animal fantasy. So I wanted to start it off with showing you my old typewriter. Now, this is probably over 100 years old. And these kind of typewriters were what people used to do schoolwork or to write books. Since we are going to be writing fiction this week, we're going to be making up a story. I thought it would be really cool to show you this old typewriter. And these are the keys, just like, it's kind of like our keyboards that we use, right, when we're typing on our computers. This... Uh, here's all the keys, and but the difference was it wasn't a computer. You put the paper inside, you roll it in here, and then you get it ready, put it in here, and you start typing. Now, a long time ago, if they made a mistake, there was really no way to correct it. Through the years, and they came up with some different ways to be able to correct it in there. Nothing like what we could do on our computer now. But I wanted to show you because I think it's really cool to think back about the old days, how they wrote books. And a lot of times they didn't even use typewriters. They just used a pen or a pencil to write. And if we go way back, they used ink. They would take a pen and dip it into ink and then write. I'm thankful that we've come so far in our writing. But the point I wanted to talk to you about was that this week you're going to write, see right here, write your own story. And you are going to have fun with that. And so I have to show you this because I think it's really cool. It's one of my favorite things that I have that is old. So let's get to our story. This week we are going to talk about this, this particular writing assignment. We're going to talk about animal fantasy. And so I want to give you some information about that. Okay. So when you're telling, and it's our genre this week is a narrative, so it's a story that you're going to make up. Again, this is your story. Now, those of you that are in my class and my reading group, you know how much I encourage you to write your own stories and draw the pictures to go with them. Again, let me remind you, even from the last video, I said that we have been given this gift of imagination that God has given us so we can create things. We can make up stories that nobody else could because it's your story and nobody's you. So this week you get to do that. So we're looking at animal fantasy. Now an animal fantasy has these features in it, okay? It has, it's a, so it's a made up story. It has characters that do things that real animals don't. And it has a setting that can be real or unreal. So let's just take my Pablo for example. Let's say that I wrote a story about him. And so the made up thing that I would say is that it, that Pablo talks. In my story, he talks. And so not only does he talk, but he can understand what I'm saying. So him and I can have a conversation because that is the story that I'm making up. So some other things that they can do is you can have, we've seen stories about animals that do things humans do, which, you know, that isn't true, but it's made up, okay? It's fiction. You're making it up today. So some of the ideas are an animal fantasy is a made up story. It has characters that, um, with animals that do things that they really don't do. So like if I have Pablo in my story talking, you know, in real life, he can't talk, Right. They have their own language, animals, but he can't talk. So an animal fa fantasy has a setting that can be real or unreal. So I can make the story up as you're writing. You can make it up. It could be on the moon. It could be at Disneyland. It could be in Hawaii. It could be in your backyard. You are making it up, and it can be anywhere you want it to be, okay? So, and by the way, what I'm reading from here, you have... Hopefully in front of you, it's going to be a part of the packet that we're going to be providing for you to take home and work on. So the word choice, writers use only words they need. So as you're writing, you only want to put words in this story that you need that go with the story. Like I wouldn't want to write about something else besides Pablo and the story about him talking or whatever he ends up doing. 
And then writers use clear and complete sentences, okay? And then a fantasy has a beginning, a middle, and an end, okay? So we have, where I live here, we have ducks, we have rabbits, and he loves to chase after them. So I would probably write a story about Pablo and how all of a sudden I'm on a walk with him and he starts talking to the ducks. And then all of a sudden the ducks start talking back to Pablo. And then the rabbits come walking by and they start talking too. And the three of them have a conversation. And so that's kind of where I would do in my story because I have a cute little brown dog here that is adorable. So now sentences begin with a capital letter. Of course, you guys know that. And then important words have capital letters too. So if you're going to put a name in there, like Pablo would have a capital letter. If you're going to say Disneyland, like your story takes place at Disneyland, you want to capitalize Disneyland. So names and places like that, they would be capital letters in your sentence. And then of course, you want to have a question mark or an exclamation point at the end or a period, depending on what your sentence has in it. So as a refresher, you want to think about, so the story is you're going to write about, I'm going to have to put you down now, Pablo. Say bye. Bye bye. You're going to write about an animal that changes its mind. Oh boy. That's going to be exciting. Now, Animals do change their mind, right? But they don't tell us about it. Like there's times Pablo doesn't want to go for a walk. Most of the time he does, but sometimes he doesn't. So we want to remember that. We also want to remember that you want to keep in mind as you are writing your story that it is who are the characters. So you want to define that. That is one of, that's something you have to kind of know at the beginning. You can kind of create that as you go, but you got to know who's going to be in your story. Okay. Who are the characters? Is it going to be about a dog, a cat, ducks? What animal are you going to put in your story? You could also have a human in your story. Like I would be in my story about Pablo because we're on a walk. So what do your animal characters do that animals cannot do? Because again, remember, this is an animal fantasy story. And so it's fiction. You're going to make, um, you're going to make up some fun stuff on this. I love fiction because you can just create your story. Okay. So who are the characters? And what do your animal characters do that animals cannot do? Okay. Then, and this is all in the, in your packet that you hopefully have in front of you or near you that you're going to look at when you write your assignment. And where is the setting? Where is it taking place? So a good story has to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Then it has to have good characters. It has to have strong characters in it. Otherwise, it could kind of be like a boring story. Like, well, who's in this story? So you come up with the characters that you want it to be in, that you want to be in the story. And then where's it taking place? Have fun with that. Come up with some really fun things that animals can do because they can talk or any other thing. It's up to you what you want to make them uh, do. And I want to show you a couple pictures here like I did last time. These are pictures of animals, just to give you an idea of some animals that maybe you can write about. So I see a cute puppy, a duck, a cow, a deer, a chicken, a sheep, a bunny, and then we have a fox, a little kitten, let me see down here. I guess I cut off the top part, but that was a parrot and I cannot remember the other one that was. And you're going to write about it. Let's see what it does when you do this one. No, you're going to write about it. Let me see what it does. Yeah, it turns. You're going to write about it on the page that's been provided for you. Again, the question is write a story about an animal that changes its mind about something. That is what you're going to have fun with today. And 
you're going to make it up. So I'm going to give you a couple minutes right now. I'm going to go get the book because I'm going to read you a story, the Pearson book. I'm going to read you a story about an animal that changed its mind. I'm going to go get it over there. You be thinking about the characters that you think you would want in your narrative animal fantasy. It's going to be a lot of fun. And remember, creativity. Only we have our own creativity. Nobody can write a story for you. You write your own story. And it's going to be awesome. Well, I mean, people do write stories about other people. But I mean, today, for this assignment, you are writing and creating your own story. I will be right back. You hold on, okay? So I'm going to read you the story. I also made you a copy of this, but this is a really cute story. And all of us teachers in first grade love to read stories to our class. And so this is going to be nice to be able to just take a moment, just sit tight. You know, if you got some popcorn there, you could be eating some popcorn as you hear the story. As soon as Miss Van Gerwen finds it, I had it marked. And now it has disappeared from my story, from my eyes. Hold on. I'm getting it. No, that's not the one. It's in day one. I apologize. I'm going to go back and here it is. It is called, oh, it's so cute. And like I told you, I have rabbits here in my neighborhood. Robbie Rabbit. Now, I need my glasses. Oh, my class knows very well. I'm always looking for my classes, glasses in my class. <laughs> here we go. Robbie Rabbit. And we have a picture down here of the rabbit. Okay. So just sit and enjoy this story. Okay. And use your imagination as you're hearing the story. On the day Robbie Rabbit was born, his father looked out the window and saw a red bushy tail. A fox, he cried. From that day on, Robbie believed that he was a fox. His brothers and sisters tried to make him believe that he was a rabbit, but he just laughed. I heard what my dad said, he would reply, I'm a fox. I heard that, but Robbie tried very hard to make his family believe he was a fox. First, he ran from one side of the field to another. See, he said, a fox has freedom to run like that. Next, he chased a tiny brown mouse. See, he said. A fox chases mice. I'm a fox. Last, he marched up and down in front of them, twitching his little tail. See, he said, a fox has a beautiful bushy tail, just like me. For a while, his father thought Robbie was amusing, but then he started to worry. What if Robbie saw a fox outside the house one day? What if he tried to make friends with it? Sounds like a good idea. Robbie's father took him to the celery patch. On the way, his father spied something sparkling on the ground. He hopped over to the shiny object and looked down at it. My dog's trying to talk right now. In his doggy talk, he wants his toy out of the cabinet. Robbie Rabbit, his father said, look at this. Robbie looked down at the small mirror and saw a rabbit looking back at him. Why, I'm a rabbit, Robbie said. Yes, you are, his father said. And I would be quite miserable if you were anything but a rabbit. Robbie took a closer look at the rabbit. Head staring back at him. I am handsome. I'm a handsome rabbit at that. He exclaimed. Indeed, his father said. Indeed, you are. And finally, Robbie Rabbit believed he was a rabbit and not a fox. So remember this week, our first writing was having a change, seeing things a certain way and then being willing to change. So our character here thought he was a fox. And he had to make a change in his life and realized, looked in the mirror and said, wait a minute. I'm not a fox. I'm a rabbit. So I love this story. I think it helps us to know that we, as we're writing this, we're writing about some, an animal that changes its mind about something. 
So what are some good ideas for that? I want you to think about that. Write a story about an animal that changes its mind about something. For example, my story about Pablo on a walk and all of a sudden he talks, Pablo always wants to chase the rabbits, whatever we see them on our trail. So maybe in my story, he could change his mind about chasing the rabbits and the duck and decide to, hey, I want to be friends with them. That could be what happens in my story. What can happen in yours? What animals are you going to choose? Remember I showed you some pictures? What's your favorite animal? Write about them. And remember the storyline? Where is the setting? Where's the setting? Who are the characters? Then, what does your animal do? Or what do your animals do? You can have more than one in there. And that, that animals cannot do. Have them have... Have them be able to do some things that animals can't do ordinarily because this is a fiction and it's an animal fantasy. It's a fun story for you to do, okay? I hope you have so much fun writing this. Again, your best handwriting. And I know that every teacher, Mrs. Curtis, myself, and Mrs. Coppola, would love if you could take a picture of your writing and send it to us uh, by email or you can text it. We would love to see your finished product. Enjoy writing about a narrative story, which is a story about animal fantasy. Have fun with it. Until next time, take care.